So why don't we just start with when you found out you had to close the library, what kind of thinking did the staff do to get ready? Well, it was, first of all, it was heartbreaking because, you know, so much of what we do is that physical building. So that part was really hard because we know that so many folks come in and they, they use our building. But then we have always had this other part, which is our online services, which not everybody uses for whatever reason. You know, they just don't like the technology. So we knew that we had to boost that, like that was going to become an important piece. And then we thought about our, our physical programming and how could we pivot that um, to online. So the, the boosting of the the digital things that we already do, like downloadable audiobooks, downloadable ebooks, we've got movie streaming, um, was good, to, good and easy to do. And then we've added some things. So we've added tumble books for kids, which is ebooks for kids, but it has an interactive component, so they're kind of fun. Um, and we've added, uh, we always have had magazines that people check out, but we've added a page that shows some online magazines that we think are, are good and they're not ad heavy. So that's a fun place to go as well. And we've added um, some, some challenges for folks to do online. So we have a badge challenge, which you can participate in. And as the community earns more badges, digital prizes will get unlocked and then we have a youth activity challenge and if as kids do that they can earn a free gift card at uh, Phoenix oh wow that's fantastic so yep. um, tell I mean all of a sudden you had to be working remotely with the staff how, how did that work out how did the staff adjust to this transition They've adjusted really well. So librarians tend to be technologically savvy anyways. So uh, they did a really great job. I think uh, it's been a fun challenge to figure out, okay, how do we bring our programming in a digital format? And with Zoom, as we're using today, it's it's been not so bad. So we have English um, language learning classes. So we've had some of those already starting. Um, some of those have already started and people are are loving those we had our first story time on zoom this week and so families could sign up they log in and megan our youth librarian read a story and because she can see the families they could participate in the songs and the finger plays uh, we started uh, a new online book discussion david copperfield so I don't know if a lot of people know that David Copperfield was actually read in a serialized form. So we're doing that. So we read five chapters a week and we're meeting. And then our regular book clubs have book discussion groups have gone over to Zoom and we have a cookbook club. And usually the cookbook club, they would come together and have a community meal. We can't do that part, but we're still going to talk about the cookbook. So that's coming up on Sunday. Are you finding people are engaging? at levels that you were hoping to see? Yes, yes. I think it's been a little bit uh, slower, but we've kind of wanted, we've taken our time because we really wanted to give folks some quality things. So another thing we've done is we've put together this virtual calendar. So if you go to our website, we've we've got our, some of our we've got our original content on there but we also have recommended content so our librarians went and looked and really thought about what's what's some good stuff because I think we're getting overloaded with lots of things you can do and when is it when is it happening so if you you know on Friday at 10 o'clock if you want to know if there's something good for your child to view or do an activity with you can go to our calendar and click on it so it's been vetted by librarians so it's taken us some time but we've we've tried to be thoughtful about it so it's a so it has a high value for the for the community so as you said the building of the Fletcher Free Library is a really important um, community gathering place and there are people that don't really have any other place to go during the day. So have you been working with the organizations that serve those folks? We've been we've been trying, but it's been tough because we want to we also want everybody to stay home and stay safe and stay healthy. Uh, one thing that we just started this week is we are going to the meal pickup sites 
and we're giving free books away. So we're going to try and go once every two weeks because we know that not everybody has technology to use ebooks or e audio books. So we've got um, all kinds of books for kids that we're doing. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that we've done. I think one of the things we're doing is we're trying to let people know that we're still here. So we're still on staff either by email, phone, we've got web chat that we've added and we will call people to. So if there's been a reluctance to use any of these digital resources, now is the time. And, and we will work with you from step one to step 17 to get you on those resources because we do realize there's a little bit of a learning curve there's a little bit of a lift but that's what we do is we help people with that now i imagine you've been in touch with librarians around vermont tell us a little bit about those conversations and how other libraries are responding it's been really uh heartening because uh everybody's doing this this change, this pivot. And so a lot of libraries are doing online story times, which has been fun to see and engaging that way. Um, a lot of them are trying to do uh, different activities to get people out walking in the community. I think some folks know about the, the stuffed animals that people are putting in the windows. So that so when families are out going for walks, they might try and spot stuffed animals in the window. So if you happen to be walking by the library, you might spot a few stuffed animals in the windows. Um, so other community things that are happening, libraries are trying to, to add on to. But I think, you know, when we do talk to, we try and support one another because it is it is hard. You know, it's it's hard not to be able to provide that that personal service that we've all been so used to to doing. I think the other thing we're talking about too is what does it look like when we reopen up, and so how do we make this very um, public community space safe for everybody and welcoming for everybody? So we're starting to brainstorm those ideas too. Well, is there anything you want the community to be aware of? Um, I mean, you I think you've covered a lot of it, but any message from the library director for the Burlington community? You know, I think the library is here for you. We are here for you. And, and one of the things that we'd like to think is if we can get those stories to you somehow, because I think sometimes, during times like these, there's the power of stories that can sometimes just take you away. It's an escape, right? To really um, read a good book. And sometimes you can read that book, you're, you know, just yourself and you have that, you know, that one experience, you in the book, that's very private, but you can also do read alouds with your family and then have that more communal experience. And you can do audiobooks. So you can just, you know, fire up the computer and download an audiobook. And maybe during a meal, instead of um, if you're all tired of seeing one another and, and chatting, because you know we're we're confined right now, listen to a story together or go through a, a chapter book together and um, have that kind of be part of your communal experience because stories can can take us away. And I think we need Need that right now. Wonderful. Mary, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate all the work you're doing and the staff is doing. And uh, thanks so much. Thank you for having me on. I, I love talking about the library. And so thanks for the opportunity. All right. That's great.